Hello and welcome to this week's webcast. I'm Ennis Warlick. And I'm Drew Gentry. We have an elite show planned, but first, let's step into the box for the three strikes. The finalists for the Naismith Basketball Hall of Fame have been announced. Among the notable names are Jack Sigma, Chris Weber, Ben Wallace, Paul Westphal, Sidney Moncrief, and Bobby Jones. Ennis, who do you think deserves to get in this year? I'm going to go with uh, Weber, Westphal, and Moncrief. Now, Moncrief, I'm going to start off with him, one of the best all-around uh, athletes to ever play. He was the first person to win the Defensive Player of the Year award and just a, a solid defender, also pretty wet in 2K. I love using him. Um, <laughs> also, I'm going to go with uh, Chris Weber. I mean, Chris Weber's a long overdue guy. Um, just a, 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 Should definitely get in. I agree a, with you on that one. A great big man, um, obviously. Obviously deserved to get on way before this. Um, I, I think he should have gotten in over Ray Allen, and that's just me. Um, I, I can't ever take anything away from Ray Allen. Well, I think Weber definitely deserved well, so it, but, but still. Listen, listen to this. You look at their stats, and you look you look at Ray, Ray Allen. Ray Allen is only top top 50 in, point, in I'm sorry, minutes per game right. and then points. Now, if you look at Chris Weber, he's top 50 in minutes, steals, blocks, rebounds and points. It's just absur absurd. I, they mentioned that on the All-Star weekend that he should have definitely got he in. He should have. And I think the only person we differed on was I put in Ben Wallace. Yeah, I think Ben Wallace gets in. I know he only averaged 5.4 points. And that's but my, that's the that, thing. He didn't average points, but his defense, he won four uh, player of the years. The only one that matches uh, Dikembe Mutombo. So get that out of here if you're not talking about him. Right. And then you got to just think about, he won a championship in Detroit. Bad boy Pistons, hard-nosed basketball. But I wouldn't say, but I wouldn't say he, they won that championship because of Wallace. And the other thing is this. I think Wallace should get into the Hall of Fame. Do I think he should get in the Hall of Fame now? No, I think Westfall should. Westfall is almost 70 years old, and this man averaged 20, 20, 21 points per game, five, five, six assists over his career. He was a great player. Yeah. Legendary UFC fighter George St. Pierre has announced his retirement. GSP went 26 and two in his fighting career and dominated the 170 pound division in two separate stints from 2006 to 2013 and 2016 and 2018. Drew, how high does GSP rank among MMA's all-time greatest fighters? Number one, he had the second longest consecutive streak of 2,204 days in UFC history of holding a title. He defended his title nine times. He has the most title or wins in title bouts, and he has a two UFC championships in welter and uh, middleweight championships and you can't really see somebody that transitions so well he has two losses later in his career right. so you got to give that to him number one and most websites that i looked at as well said he's number one well i'm gonna i'm gonna say this also you look at his career and you look at those two losses he avenged both of them as well beat sarah beat hughes later in his career also he took that little hiatus where he just wasn't fighting for a little while and still came back and was still the best fighter in the world do you think that was the uh, great move for him to refresh i think that served his career really well at the end especially when he transitioned exactly it kept him fresh and if and, and this is the other thing i'll say you look at fighters that are near his caliber anderson silva john jones but you look at both of those names there's an asterisk next to both of yeah. them yeah John Jones is definitely a person of interest that could possibly be better than him, but you got to, PEDs definitely is going to take away from his deal. Absolutely. As part of his endorsement deal with New Balance, Kawhi Leonard's first signature shoe has been released. The shoe is tame in design and features Kawhi Leonard's name fully spelled out on the back in Times New Rom Roman font with a period. New Balance is embracing Kawhi's quiet and plain nature with the look of the shoe. In this is this shoe hot or not? And will this deal work out for New Balance? I love Kawhi. He's he's such a he's such a cool guy. He's so calm and collected all the time. But never smiles is, though. Never smiles. But I mean, he's still a, he's still a, he's still a cool guy. Cool, calm, and collected. No, he shouldn't have a signature shoe, man. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> you look at him and they're just so bland. They're they're. They're not hot. They're not, they're not, they're not hot, hot. But they're, they fit him so well. They fit his personality. The fact that they did Times New Roman, I think, is a joke. But it serves so well to our age, too, because what are we hate writing or doing most? Writing papers. Absolutely. What is on the back of it? The period font. That is. It might fit those kids that are super quiet and the, those kids that walk into the gym super quiet, don't look like they have game, and then they go and just bang on you. So yeah, yeah I mean, a person that can lock you down. Right. I, I think that's the type of player that's going to be inspired. Absolutely. 
absolutely. A quieter version of Dennis Rodman kind of player. Not as vocal as Kawhi. His focus is mainly but on defense, the but they do the dirty work. They do work. the dirty work. That's all the time for three strikes. Next, I'll be back to discuss some MLB under-the-radar prospects.